Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. I'm so glad you're joining me today. Today I get to share with you a project. Um, it's going to look Halloween, but it could possibly get away with just being a simple um, card for a significant other. I guess because I'm going to be using the sentiment in the Dancing Halloween Sentiment stamp set that says Love You to the End. Um, or I might might use Love You to Death. I think that goes really good with the die set that I have here. This is the Spellbinders Dancing Grim. So great for Halloween cards. Um, there's some kinetic motion in here. Um, and I thought we'd make a, a fun card with this today. This is part of the Spellbinders Dancing Halloween collection. And... I'd love to hear your comments. You can tell me down below if you think this is a great Halloween card or this could possibly get away with being a card just because card for your significant other. Let me let me know down below. But we're going to do some die cutting. I picked some colors of cardstock here. We're going to create a Royal Amethyst Grim. The cardstock that I'm using is from Spellbinders Color Essentials. Um, and so let's take our Grim. And it's very easy to create our dancing grim. So I'll take his hood and his coat, and we'll cut that out with our royal amethyst. My fog cardstock we're going to put off to the side. This is what we're going to put on our um, create the card front panel with. And then I thought we would add a little bit of a background with our Glacier cardstock. We're going to do a little bit of ink blending with this. So I'll put this off to the side too. I have some white cardstock for the skeleton part of our Grimm. And then this is like the detail piece that goes behind the hood. And I'll die cut this out with some black cardstock. And then for our Dancing Grimm's sieve that he's holding, I thought we would cut that out. Make it a little sparkly with some Spellbinders Silver Glitter Foam. And so we'll die cut this out. This actually has the cuff part of our Grimm's coat here. So I will die cut this out also with some black cardstock. Just because I want that piece here. Let me see. That will be the, the sickle or the scythe um, part of our our dancing grim and then we have the stick that I'm going to bring in some portobello cardstock. Let me grab a strip. I got some here. Okay so this one will die cut out here with this too. I will and you know what Let's go ahead, since we're die cutting everything, we're going to die cut everything out. I'll take my fog guard stock. This is a card front panel, but I like a little bit of a border. So I'm going to trim this down so it measures four inches by five and a quarter. Let's just trim this away. Keep these too. Put these back in your little... Um, and your scratch paper little bins because those are great for sentiment strips. Okay, now we'll take this panel. I have a heart die. I'm gonna create a not so shaken shaker with this. Um, usually when you have a, a dancing element from Spellbinders, you don't want any um, dimension on the background because it can um, interfere with the kinetic motion. So I'm gonna create a flat shaker. So I'm gonna take a heart and create a window and this panel, I will just tape this down. I put my best ever craft tape in one of my tape dispensers. And it, it's been working really well, but it's not very pretty on my craft desk. So I bought a Scotch Porcupine um, tape holder just for my best ever craft tape. And when it comes in, I'll share it with you guys. It was super cute. And it was like five stars. So when it comes in, I get to share that with you. Because pretty things on your craft desk are always nice. <laughs> so I have everything ready to die cut. I will be right back. I have everything die cut out. And I'm actually going to keep this on here. This is our, our window. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of shading on the bottom of our Grimm. 
I'm going to bring in my black ink. I'm just going to use my memento ink because it's what I have on my desk. And then I have one of my blending tools here that I use just for my inks. And I'm going to add a little bit of shading from the bottom of my grim, kind of fading up. And we'll do that same thing to our, our hood here. And that's it for that. I'm going to, now we have this little black piece. What we're going to do is flip this around. I'll add some glue. Actually, we'll put some glue behind here. And I will tack this down. There's deboss detail on the, on this hood too. So you kind of know where to place this which I'm a little bit off. Hold on, let me fix that. There we go. And then we'll add our, the skeleton part. I'm going to grab my tweezers. I'll take this and we'll go ahead and add this to our skeleton. I've mentioned before I'm not a big Halloween person, but I thought the sentiments are cute enough to where this could, could be a just because card. Um, I think I love you to death <laughs> would be kind of fun. Let me know what you think um, down below if you think this is a Halloween card or a significant other just because. I'd love to hear your comments. But there's our, our, our our grim face. Did I get him kind of crooked? I don't think so. And then you see this little circle? This is our mechanism that makes our our dancing element. So basically it's going to go like this. Very easy to do because all you do is put a foam square here. But I'm going to finish up his sickle. Or his scythe, I should say. Sickles are short. Scythes are longer. And... I die cut out this, oh this is, so let's go ahead and take our, you know I wear these bracelets and I don't pay attention but when I edit my videos I notice that um, it makes noise. If, if that drives you crazy I am so sorry, I don't mean to, um, mean for that to drive you crazy. Okay let's take I'll take some glue. We're going to add it over here. And the blade part lines up perfectly with the top part of the Sith. So we're going to add this right on the top. And then our second piece for layering and dimension goes on the bottom. And I'm just going to layer these two together. Gluing two pieces of glitter foam takes a little bit of time to adhere. But when it does, I think we have the dimension that we're looking for. The back's flat, so that's good. Just the top of it has the dimension, and I think we can get away with it. Now, these two little pieces, when we die cut out the school face, you get the hands, too. So we're going to go ahead and add some glue. Let's see. Just a little dot of glue here, and I like to bring my larger die to the smaller die, and we will add our, our hand here. And then first we have, we die cut out the black that has the, the cuff here, and there's deboss detail on here too so you know where to line it up. I'll just add a little bit of glue, and then we can add our cuff here. There we go, and then we can add our hand. I'm going to add our hand on top of our sieve. We're going to layer, put a little dot of glue here. 
we'll add our sickle. And then I will add the other hand part right on top of the sickle for a little dimension. Okay. So we have the bottom part of our our little grim. And then we have our little top part. And he's ready to go. We're not going to use these pieces, so I'll put these off to the side. Of course, if you wanted to make the inside of his coat with glitter, you could do that too. We'll put this over to the side, and then we're going to create our background. I mentioned we're going to keep the heart from our window here. And what I'm going to do is take a pencil. I'm going to trace around our heart here. I'm going to do a little bit of shading, and I know... Since it's a heart shape, I, I want to know exactly where to shade. I'm going to be bringing in my Memento Bahama Blue ink. And also my Memento Black, Tuxedo Black ink. And we're going to kind of create a night sky here. And what I like to do first is add a little color with the blue. And I'm not going to go all the way towards the middle. I'm going to fade fade because that will give me like a little halo kind of effect like a a glowing kind of a look my ink pad was sliding all over the place so I brought in my my ink mat here I'm gonna bring in my tuxedo black and we're gonna darken up these edges here Okay. And I love how that looks kind of glowing. I think that's going to work out great. So we'll put this off to the side. First, to create my flat shaker, it's pretty simple. I'm going to take my panel, I'm going to put some adhesive behind here. And then I'm going to line up. I can vaguely see my pencil mark that we created. I will line it up here. And so I will lightly tack it on my panel, like so. Since we have adhesive on there, I'm going to line up my panel how I want it on my card base. And then I can tack it down. And I know it's perfectly positioned where I want it to go. I have a piece of acetate. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take some score tape. After we have our tape adhered, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go over that score tape. I'm doing this because my panel is pretty saturated with my ink. And I just want to make sure that that double sided tape sticks to it. You could use glue for this too because you won't be able to see it, but I'll remove the release paper here This is kind of going to be one of those shakers that don't really shake because it's going to be flattened now. I'm going to bring in my um, My confetti I'm calling it confetti because sequins have a little bit of cup to it um, and I'm I have these little itty bitty stars and I'm not sure where I got them at but if I can find them, I'll link them down below. But these are flat pieces, and I'm just going to spoon some out here. I think it's going to go really good in my background. Making sure I still can see those that pencil mark, which is good, because for the most part, I want those sequins inside that penciled area. Okay, I'll take my acetate. We will layer this right on top. We're going to seal those in. I'll take a bone folder, go over that acetate, kind of sealing them in. I have a star stuck in the tape, but I think it's okay. So we're just going to seal this together. Let me see if we have any movement. We have a little bit of movement. There's a little bit of movement, which is nice. 
Okay, I'll take my panel, and we remember we want the front of our card flat because we have that kinetic motion. But I love the way this looks. I'm going to stamp my sentiment now before we adhere this. And I think I'm going to stamp Love You to the end. And I'm going to place my Grim where I want him. And I think I want him off to the side. I think that's good. I always like to tilt my little dance and elements because it makes them look cuter. <laughs> Less scary, more cute. And I think that's a good spot. And I think I want to put my sentiment right here. I'm going to use my Memento ink to stamp my sentiment. You can use Versafine if you want, but I think I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending on this background panel. And so I know that my Memento ink will dry fast. That's the great thing about dye-based ink. Although the Versafine is a darker ink, um, it will stand out a little bit more. Maybe we'll use our blue, since we have the blue on our desk. I just don't want it to compete with this blue. Maybe we'll do both. We'll do blue and... Let's take some blue. I'm going to add it to the bottom here, kind of fade up. Okay, maybe should we do the top too? I'll do the top, a little bit of the top too. Next, I'll bring in my Memento ink and we'll add some black to the very bottom. Now I'll take my panel and I'm going to glue it directly on my card base. And I'm just going to use my tape runner. I think it's going to adhere really well. And we're still flat, which is nice. So still flat, which is really good, but we have a, a little bit of shake to our shaker. Okay, we're gonna take our Grim and let's make this guy dance. We're gonna place him where we want him to go. I think that's a good spot. I'm going to take a small foam square. I'm going to place it right in the center of our gram in that circle. And then I'll take my gram here. I'm going to tilt his head a little bit because that looks cute. And then we'll tack that right down. And our gram is a dancing. We got some movement with our stars in the background, and we have a little dance and um, our dance and grim. I, if I go like this, you could probably see it better. It's really hard to tell um, when you're flat. But and that's my dancing and shaker card today. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon for another card making project. Thanks so much for sticking with me to the end. Have a great day. Bye bye.